Welcome back to our series on Introductory Statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is Lecture Video 27, Part B. We're in Section 8.1 and we're going into Part 2 of a previously recorded video. And last time we started studying how we estimate mu when sigma is known and we're going to continue that in this video. So um, let's get started with that pre-recorded video. I hope you enjoy. And this is my random variable here. If this is continuous, okay, so if that's continuous, and I have an equal sign here to some value, this is a constant, so some value mu, what's the probability that x bar is exactly equal to mu? Another way of asking this is, well, on the test, I said, what's the probability that z is equal to some value a? And most of you answered correctly and said this is equal to zero because there is no area. It's just a line. This is the same answer. The probability that x bar is actually equal to mu is zero. Okay. So um, x bar, we have no probability or confidence in how good x bar is uh, any one x bar that we take. We say, okay, so I have this one sample that I take from this population and I get this value of x bar. How close is that? How close is that to mu? Well, or that's what we're going to answer. Uh, well, not quite, but we're going to answer something similar to that. But the thing is, x bar is never, e it's almost never equal to mu. We, we can't really ever say that x bar is equal to mu with any probability. So we need to do better. So how are we going to do better? Well, if I take a range of um, values, Now, remember what happens if we have a range of values. Now we have probability. There's some, this probability is greater than zero. Nice. So, if we use this interval or range of values, this is what we call a confidence interval. And often we will abbreviate that as capital CI. Now, I find that students get confused about the terms because this says this has the word confidence in there and it has the word interval. Okay? It's two words, right? Confidence and interval. Confidence. Everybody knows what confidence is. How certain or sure we are about something. And I just told you that an interval is a range of values. So if we take a number line, and if this is A, If that's A, and this is B, then this range here of values is an interval. And we can write that, if we, since I've, I'm including A and B, I can write that with the square brackets. This means that we include A and B in our interval. Now, if we wrote it as A, B, then we would say that we're not including A or B, but as close as we could possibly get to A without including A, okay? And as close as we could get to B without including B. Now, since these are um, continuous numbers, or it's a continuous line or uh, distribution that we're working with, we can get infinitely close to A without getting there, and the same thing here. Um, we can just take uh, and, and uh, keep
keep moving the decimal place and keep getting closer and closer and closer and closer to uh, to A or closer and closer and closer to B. Same thing. Okay. So for I am going to consider that our confidence interval includes the end points. So um, that will make it easier for you and a little less confusing. So the confidence interval has two words. The word confidence talks about how certain or sure we are that the interval contains our true population parameter. And again, in this chapter, we're just talking about mu, the mean. So let's define, now I have another term that has the word confidence in there. But it's different. I will not abbreviate confidence level. So confidence level... Uh, a confidence level describes a confidence interval. So these are two different things, but they're related. Okay, so for every confidence interval, we will have a confidence level, how confident we are. Okay, an example would be a 99% confidence interval. Okay. This is my confidence level. Okay. So for every confidence interval, we have a confidence level, which makes sense because the name has the name of the confidence interval has confidence in it. But again, for students, this can be confusing. So the confidence level is a probability. The confidence interval is an interval, okay? A range of values. A confidence level is a number, it's a pr probability. And it's the probability that our confidence interval actually contains the parameter. And for us in this chapter, it's mu that the confidence interval actually contains mu. But there's more to this. This is uh, a probability, and it means that we do this over and over again. So given that we take a large number of samples from of size n, the same size, from the same population, and calculate a bunch of confidence intervals, or a confidence interval for each sample, so it's a bunch of samples, so we ca calculate a confidence interval for each sample, we do this over and over and over again, then on average, then on average, um, that confidence level describes uh, how many of these uh, confidence intervals will actually contain the um, population parameter, in this case, mu. All right. So what in the world are you talking about? Well, first, let's talk about some typical confidence levels. And if we want to tell somebody that a drug uh, reduces uh, the uh, chance of them getting, uh, of them dying from a disease, let's say, then when we do our test, do you wanna hear a doctor say, let's say it's a surgery, well, I'm about 62% certain that you're going to pull through this procedure. That doesn't give you um, a warm, fuzzy feeling. It would not give me one. Uh, but if the doctor comes back and says, I'm 99% confident that you are going to survive this surgery, then I feel good. In fact, anytime we're in 90% or above, um, we have been accustomed to, in our society, think, hey, that's good, all right? That's okay, that's acceptable. You tell me I'm 90% certain to pull through something, I feel pretty good. You tell me 95, I feel better. You tell me 99, I feel better. You tell me 99.9, .9, I feel even better, all right? So, um, so these are the typical confidence levels that we're going to use. Now we need to talk about the opposite of a confidence level, and that's called a significance level.
and a significance level has this handy dandy little um, abbreviation or notation for it symbol and that's alpha okay so alpha is our significance level and the significance level is 1 minus the confidence level. So the confidence level was the probability that the, con that the uh, confidence interval actually contains mu, for this case. The significance level is the probability that our confidence inter interval does not contain mu. And again, under the same conditions, we can get, it's, it's basically, basically a proportion so if we repeatedly take different samples and of the same population, the same size, and calculate a confidence interval for each one of these, then that will, um, the average would be um, the average of uh, the, okay, the proportion, not the average, the proportion of uh, confidence intervals that do not contain the um, mean or mu would be 1 minus the confidence level and that's the significance level. Okay, So I've given you this formula here and I'm going to put it on the formula sheet so that it's there for you because you really need to know this formula to uh, do some of the problems. So let's talk a little bit more about an example of what this confidence level means. So let's say we take a sample of n equals 36 items from a population and we do not know what mu is. Up until now, our problems, we've been telling you what mu is and what sigma is. But now we don't know what mu is, which is common. But we're going to, sp we're going to say that we do know sigma squared or sigma. If you know one, you know the other. We're going to say that we do know. Now, this is not a very realistic situation in real life, but it's the easiest situation. And so um, we are going to show you how to do it this way, and then we're going to go into the real life situation, how we do this um, when we don't know what sigma is. So let's say we want a 95% confidence interval for the mean, for mu. So if we take 1,000 samples of 36 each, and for each of these samples we calculate a confidence interval, we're going to have 1,000 confidence intervals. And so um, if if we have a 95% confidence level, 95% is equal to 0.95. So 0.95 times 1,000 equals 950 CIs that will contain mu. Now, 100% minus 95% equals 5%, um, which is 0 0.05, and this is equal to alpha, our significance level. So 0 0.05 times 1,000 equals 50 confidence intervals that will not contain mu. Well, that's the end of this video, so please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the day on the course calendar. Uh, if you have questions, by all means, please come to virtual office hours. I am happy to help you. 
And if you can't do that, then, then by all means, email me. But when you email me, please email me a picture of both the problem, because I may not have access to that problem wherever I am, and a picture of your work, which allows me to know uh, how you're approaching the problem and help you best and the quickest. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Until then, stay safe and take care.